Bruno Chauffin, and I'm a French PhD student in computer science. And uh, the, um, the work I'm going to present to you today is a joint work with my PhD supervisors at the Laboratoire de Recherche en Informatique, uh, Fabrice Popi Popino and Yolen Gorda, and also with uh, Jill Genvi from Inreali. So as you can see, our paper is called Das 3 h Modeling Student Learning and Forgetting for Optimalist Scheduling Distributed Practice of Skills. And uh, we, were, we, we, we won the, with this paper the Best Full Paper Award at the EDM conference in 2019, so the last year. And we are very happy and, uh, and honored to, to be able to present it to the LAC community today. So um, I would like first to start with a trade-off that every learner and especially every student has to face at some point. We, we all need to spend time to acquire new knowledge, but since our memory is imperfect, we must also review what we have previously learned so that, that we don't forget it. And since our time is not extensible, we would like to, to find a way to spend as little time as possible reviewing old knowledge while maximizing the benefits of these reviews on long-term memory. Lucky for us, uh, cognitive scientists have come up with simple yet robust learning strategies for improving long-term memory. Um, first, uh, for example, there's uh, the, the space repetition uh, uh, strategy and the self-testing uh, strategy. Space repetition consists in temporally distributing learning sessions of a given piece of knowledge instead of spending the same time but in a single big mass session. And uh, self-testing uh, consists in testing one's knowledge, self-testing, after learning, instead of simply reading the same lesson again. And both of these uh, two strategies have been shown to improve memory retention on large learner populations. But um, since we are computer scientists, at least in my uh, research lab, uh, we, we can ask ourselves, can we do better than that? And the answer is yes, by providing students with uh, adaptive and personalized spacing schedulers instead of fixed reviewing space schedules. And so here on, on this slide, you can see two figures. And these two figures are two examples of such adaptive spacing algorithm, algorithms. So you have on the left hand side, a diagram showing how the Leitner system works. So the Leitner system, is one of the oldest adaptive spacing algorithms and it works with flashcards. So flashcards are cards used to periodically review simple pieces of knowledge such as, uh, for example, voc vocabulary or historical dates. And th there are several well-known flashcard applications uh, such as Anki or, or maybe you have heard also of Mnemosyn. And um, on the one side of the card, you have a question and on the other side of the, the card, you have the answer of this question. So this is what you want to make the learner review, actually. And the Leitner system uses a set of boxes, uh, which you can see there. And each, uh, each number on each box indicates the frequency at which cards in this box are reviewed. So in box one, you have um, uh, every day, uh, in box two, every two days, and so on. So learners try to recall the cards in their daily deck. And if they manage to recall a card, it is added to the next box. So which you, this is the process you can see here, uh, which is then less frequently reviewed. And if they fail to recall this, uh, this card, uh, it is put in the very first box, uh, which is reviewed every day. So this is one of the simplest uh, spacing algorithms. And it dates back from the 1970s, but we can already see that it adapts uh, to uh, the learner's performance because the review frequency of a flashcard directly depends on how well the learner manages to recall the flashcard. On the right-hand side, this is a screenshot of the Anki flashcard review application, which displays a more sophisticated adaptive spacing algorithm. Here, the learner can tell the application how difficult it was for her to recall the flashcard, uh, for example, hard, good, or easy. And this, uh, this information helps the algorithm personalize the flashcard review schedule. You have also other algorithms, more sophisticated, that rely on student predict predictive models to select the best flashcard to review at a given timestamp. So this is, for example, the case of uh, this work from Lindsay et al, who uh, models student forgetting and use this information to recommend uh, at each given timestamp 
the item whose memory strength is closest to a given threshold theta. So which has um, a kind of straight up, straightforward uh, uh, interpretation in terms of, uh, of cognitive process. Um, so making the, the, the learner review the flashcard that is on, uh, on the verge of being forgotten, actually. The problem is that these algorithms, they are designed to optimize pure memorization of simple pieces of knowledge that can be represented with the help of uh, flashcards. However, in uh, real world educational settings, stu students also need to learn to master and remember for a long period a set of skills. And in that case, specific items or exercises, questions, are the only way to practice one or multiple skills because we do not have to memorize the contents directly. For, for example, in, uh, imagine in mathematics, you have a student solving an exercise on fractions that requires two skills, uh, subtracting numerators and finding a common den denominator. The thing is, uh, traditional adaptive spacing schedulers that are based on flashcards are not applicable for learning skills. So, um, our goal is to extend adaptive spacing algorithms to skill practice and review. In the flashcard learning research setting, the student must learn and review the items, which you can see here uh, uh, in the bottom, in blue. But in our research setting, the student solves items to practice and review a set of underlying skills, which you have here in uh, circles, in green circles. This item skill relationships, relationships, meaning which item requires which skill, are synthesized in a so-called binary Q matrix. And in this Q matrix, a cell contains a one if the item from the row involve, involves the skill from the column, and a zero if not. For example, here, item one uh, only involves skill one and no other skill, actually. So for this, for this purpose, we choose a model-based approach. Um, thus, we need to have a student predictive model that is able to infer skill, current, and future mastery level based on past student performance data. In particular, this model should be able to work with items that involve multiple skills at the same time. However, in the student modeling literature, some models leverage in item skills relationships. Some other models incorporate the forgetting effects uh, within the model structure, but none does both of this. So in this article, we argue that traditional adaptive spacing algorithms can be extended to review and practice skills, not only flashcards, simple flashcards. Uh, so we also developed a new student learning and forgetting model that leverages item skill relationships. And we coined this model DAS3H. We show that uh, our new model outperforms four other state-of-the-art student predictive models on three educational data sets. And please note that uh, we are talking here about model predictive performance, meaning how well a model is able to accurately predict future student outcomes based on her past study history. And our experimental results suggested that incorporating both item scale relationships information and the forgetting effects within the model structure improves over models that consider one or the other. Also, we showed that using precise temporal information on past skill practice and assuming different learning and forgetting curves for different skills improves the model predictive performance. And so this is basically the whole talk. So, so here, um, uh, so here, okay, sorry. So here I give you a brief outline of the rest of the presentation. First, uh, I will present the DASH model, which was an inspiration for our DASH 3H model. Then I will detail our new model, describe our experiments and our results, and I will finally conclude this talk. So DASH is a student predictive model that was created by Linstead All in 2014. It models the probability of a student S correctly answering an item J at time stamp T with a latent student ability term alpha s, a latent uh, difficulty term delta j, and a function h theta that summarizes the effects of the previous attempts of student s on item j on this probability. And in particular, it uses the, the timestamps and the outcomes of these previous attempts for this. 
So this is the reason why it was called Dash, because it uses the item difficulty, the item difficulty, the student ability, and the, the past student history to make inferences about future student outcomes. So concerning this uh, function h theta, Lin said, oh, use this uh, specific function here. And this function uses a series of expanding time windows and counts the number of correct outcomes and attempts of the student on the item in each of these time windows, which you can see here. To be clearer, the alpha s uh, delta j, and which you have had here in this slide, and um, the theta parameters, they are learned by the dash model based on student past performance data. And only these uh, terms, the correct answer and attempt counts are given uh, in here. So now I would like to give you uh, a brief insight on, on how these time windows that we're, we were talking about here, the W here, uh, work in, in that dash model. So uh, let us let's assume that uh, the set of time windows that, were cho that was cho chosen by uh, the human expert is one day, seven days, 14 days and plus infinity here. And also assume that the student had only one attempt on the item three days before here, this uh, little cross. Then uh, three out of four time windows will be active in this situation. The first time window, uh, the, the one day time window is not active because the attempts occurred more than one day before. And but now let us take the same situation, but one week later. Now, there are only two active time windows, so the uh, 14 and the plus infinity time window. The attempt is not in the seven, time, uh, seven days time window anymore because it, it, now it occurred 10 days before. So to sum it up, the dash model from Lindsay et al. accounts for both learning and forgetting processes, thanks to this set of expanding time windows I was talking about. It also induces uh, within its structure diminishing returns of practice within the time window thanks to these log counts. So over practicing a given item in a short period will indeed increase student correctness probability on this skill, but each subsequent attempt will yield less and less performance benefits. Finally, its time module H theta was inspired by two major cognitive models of human memory, actor and MCM. So we chose to base our new dash 3 h model on the DASH model because DASH had shown higher predictive performance than a hierarchical Bayesian version of the well-known item response theory model on the real-world experimental da data, uh, which was based on vocabulary relearning. And also, uh, mainly also because it was successfully incorporated within a real-world cognitive science experiment showing that uh, trying to, uh, to show that uh, adaptive spacing algorithms would be better in terms of long student long-term memory than fixed space schedules. However, we had to extend this DASH model to handle multiple skill item tagging. Doing so was not only necessary for our research problem, we expected also that it will help to improve the model predictive performance. Also, the original DASH assumed that memory decays at the same rate for every skill. We hypothesized that uh, this led to model underfitting. Thus, we extended DASH in three ways. We modified the um, H theta tem temporal module to take the multiple skills into account and allow the influence of past study history on future correctness probability to differ from one skill to another. Second, our uh, uh, model DASH 3H estimates easiness or difficulty parameters, uh, not only for each item J, but also for every, every skill K. And finally, we use the recently proposed knowledge tracing machines or KTMs um, framework from V and Kashima uh, uh, instead of mere logistic regression to get a richer model. So here on this slide, we ha you have an explanation uh, on how um, precisely knowledge tracing machines work so I won't detail this because uh, I like time, but I would, I would be happy to answer questions if, if you had some uh, on this. So now here, this is uh, our model, that's 3H. Um, 
for this, this is uh, its formulation. For an embedding dimension of d equals zero, we have added this sum of skill easiness biases here uh, to the model. These beta k, they are estimated by dash 3 h, just like the delta g here or the alpha s. We also added a sum over skills in the h theta temporal module here. Now, thetas are estimated by the model for each skill, and the C and A terms count the previous attempts and correct outcomes in each time window for each skill K. So now, you can see that H theta can be seen and interpreted as a sum of skill memory strengths, one for each different skill. Please note that to predict student performance on an item J, only the skills that are involved in this item, by this item, which was specified in the, in the Q matrix, uh, only these specific items are used. This is the specific meaning of the KC of J function. And this is why we called our model das 3 h for item difficulty, student ability, skill, and student skill practice history. So now I'm going to detail the experiments that we conducted to compare our model's predictive performance to other state-of-the-art student predictive models. Please note again that we have evaluated how accurately our model is able to predict future student performance, not how well it could improve human memory if incorporated within, a, within a, an adaptive spacing algorithm. So this, is, this would be for further work. First, I will start with a quick re refresher on machine learning model comparison, since some of you may not, may not or might not be familiar with such methods. So the idea is to first train the models and estimate their parameters on one part of the data set, which we, which we will call the training part. Then test, uh, test the model and make the models predict the outcome on the other part, which was held out uh, of the data set. And finally, we gather prediction metrics uh, on each of these um, test, uh, test, uh, uh, testing data sets and compare the models based on these results. In our experiments, we use five-fold cross-validation at the student level, meaning that we split the student population into five disjoint groups and made the models predict on completely unseen students. We also use distributional assumptions on the model's features to help model training and avoid overfitting. We finally use the same time windows as uh, Lin said all with their original dash model. So one hour, one day, seven days, 30 days, and plus infinity. So as for the contenders now, we compared our new dash 3 edge model to the dash model I was talking about the, uh, uh, previously. Uh, also to the item response theory model, to the performance factor analysis model, and to the additive factor model, which are all state-of-the-art student predictive models. Uh, however, to ensure a fair comparison between these models, we cast them within the knowledge tracing machines framework, like dash 3 edge and we use for these three different feature embedding dimensions. So zero, five, and 20. And so this table here is symbols used by each of the compared models. And I'd be happy to, to give more details during uh, the, the QA uh, session uh, at the end. We compared these five models on three different real world educational data sets, namely one assessments data set and two KDD Cup EDM challenge data sets. Here, data, data consists of log, logs of student item interactions on two intelligent tutoring systems. Basically, we use the information of which student sold which item at which time, the outcome of the, this attempt, and the skills re required to solve this, uh, this item. These two uh, intelligent tutoring systems train students on math knowledge, for example, on algebra here, and uh, we selected them because they contain both timestamps and items with multiple skills, which is quite rare in the publicly available EDM datasets. Finally, we pre-process data by re removing users with less than 10 interactions, duplicated interactions, and interactions that do not contain information about the skills required by the item. And this table here gives uh, um, information about the dataset that uh, datasets that we used and I would be also glad to answer questions about that at the end. So now uh, concerning our main results, uh, this, this table give, gives our main results and we reported here on the results that with an embedding dimensions 
uh, dimension of zero because as we will see later, using multidimensional feature embeddings had an, amb an, amb an ambiguous effect on model performance. Besides, the results were very similar. We see that on every data set, our DAS3H model outperforms the other models by a substantial margin on the AUC metric, which measures how accurately a machine learning model is able to predict the outcomes on unseen data. We obtain the same patterns of results when using the negative log likelihood as our student model predictive performance metric. And so, uh, as, I, as I told you previously, uh, the, here, uh, I com we com uh, here on each figure, we compare each group of free bars represents the predictive performance of the student model on, on a given data set for every embedding dimension. So for example, the blue bar for uh, an embedding dimension of zero, orange bar for, for five, and green for 20. For example, here you have the uh, AUC metric of the DAS free edge uh, model on the Algebra 05 data set with an embedding dimension of 20. And so we, ha we have here the DAS free edge results and here the IRT results. And here we can see that um, the impact of the multidimensional feature embeddings, uh, as I said before, is quite small in every case and not consistent across data sets and models. For instance, an embedding dimension of zero gives a performance boost to dash 3 h on Algebra 05, uh, for example here, but uh, nothing or almost nothing for IRT. It even seems to yield unstable model performances sometimes, for instance for dash 3 h here on the bridge to Algebra dataset. We also conducted additional analysis to understand what made our model more predictive than the others. In particular, we compared dash 3 h here in blue to an alternative ver version of, of it, which had no time with those features. Only log counts of previous attempts and correct outcomes on every skill. So this is the model in orange. So ba basically this means that this alternative model did, did not have a, um, a, an information on a, a temporal information as precise as in, uh, in uh, the original dash 3 h Here, each pair of bars represents both models performance on a different data set. And we found that using the temporal information of past skill practice instead of simple win-fail counters substantially improve AUC performance. So, which we interpreted as knowing when each interaction happened matters for the model. Finally, we wanted to know if assuming different learning and forgetting curves for different skills uh, in our dash 3 h model had an impact on the model performance. Thus, we compared our original dash 3 h model to a different version of it that assumed the same learning and forgetting curves for every skill. In other words, these, um, these theta parameters I was talking to you about uh, previously from the temporal uh, module H theta, these were all shared across skills in this dash 3 h one p uh, alternative uh, model. And this table gives on every data set every embedding dimension of uh, the model performance comparison between these two alternative uh, dash 3 h formulations. And we found that our uh, original dash 3 h model outperforms its alternative version in every case, suggesting that assuming different learning and forgetting curves for different skills consistently yields better predictive performance. Uh, power, yeah, performance. So, which means that some skills seem to be easier to learn and slower to forget than others. At, at least this is what we see uh, uh, from our model's results. So now, uh, this presentation is coming to, uh, to, to its end. And to conclude, I would say that human forgetting, forgetting is ubiquitous, but luckily, cognitive science uh, gives us efficient and simple learning strategies for mitigating memory decay. And, um, and also, machine learning coupled with cognitive science can build, build us tools to personalize these strategies from cognitive science to further improve long-term memory retention. Adaptive spacing algorithms have been focusing on pure memorization, but we argued that they can be extended to optimize practice and retention of skills. We proposed a new student model called Dastry H that incorporates information on skills and the forgetting effects to predict future learner performance. And this industry edge model showed higher predictive performance than other state-of-the-art student models and has the advantage to fit our model-based approach for optimally scheduling skill review. Okay, so this is the end. And I would like to thank you all for your attention. 
our paper and co code are available at the following links. And uh, now I would be more than happy to answer any questions regarding uh, our research work. Or you can also send me questions at the following email address. Thank you very much.